and this is what happens when you're out of reach of two other entities that try to constantly follow you. So first of all, huge thank you to Jack Powell who put this patch together allowing you to do this sort of thing. There's actually another way to enable debug mode, but it involves editing a configuration file that my copy of the game doesn't appear to have. And I never found out why, but I know I'm not the only one with that problem. So I'm using this patch instead, which I'll have a link to down in the description below. And this lets you do a number of things, and I'm going to go along and display them here for you as I use them, or at least talk about them. The one I'm currently using is the Ghost Command, which allows you to fly anywhere in a map while also disabling your character's collision detection. Meaning you can move through the walls and anything else in the game. Well, now they're out of sync. I would have thought that they would have both landed the same way. And... Yeah, they'll just keep running in an endless loop trying to get to you. At least Hermione landed on the other set of stairs that time, but... Okay, there's so much more we could be looking at with this debug patch. So I got myself up here the same way I was floating in the grand staircase using the ghost command, which I suppose I should have explained how to even enter that command in the first place, but... Look at these trees, though. We can see how they would overlap each other so that from a normal position on the grounds you wouldn't see these gaps between the texture walls. But yeah, anyways, to enter a command, all you have to do is hit the tab key on your keyboard. A thin text box will appear at the bottom of the screen, and you just type in the command and hit enter. You'll see me doing that throughout these next three videos, and while I'm at it, I'll add the fly command to our list as well. It's the same as the ghost command, but you keep your collision detection, so you can fly around but can't go through any objects. That would let you physically run up the walls instead of phasing through them, if you wanted. Okay, somehow during all this I lost Ron and Hermione. And just to get this third one out of the way, the walk command returns you to your default state that you would always be playing in anyways. So if you've flown somewhere but want to touch back onto the ground, just type in walk and you'll be able to move around again normally. Karen and just like that, they've reappeared. I want to try flying through the hills and trees this time. Well, that sucks. Why would it freeze me in midair? All I can do is change direction by waving my mouse around, and I guess I can still technically move really slowly with the arrow keys. Changing the mode to fly didn't work, but it brought the rings back. That's strange how the ghost mode made them disappear for some reason. I'm gonna give you a fourth command, even though it isn't something I really used, but it's called God Mode. You only type in the word God to enable this mode, and all it does is make your character invincible. But this game is so easy that why would you bother? But yeah, there it is if you want to use it. Okay, changing the mode back to walk returned Buckbeak's ability to move back to normal again. Nice, I made it look like I got him stuck on the tree. I bet if we actually played any Quidditch in this game, you'd get the same results on a broomstick as well. Okay, now watch this shit. Oh yeah, I really just did that. You can take control of any character in the game as long as you know what the game's internal name for each character is, which I'll explain a little later. So yeah, we'll just run around a little bit. I wonder if I can score points as another character by going through rings in reverse. <laughs> no, 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 no. That, that was, <laughs> that was too perfect. Okay, so what did we just do? Harry took off on Buckbeak like he was supposed to, then got Buckbeak stuck in midair, then freed Buckbeak before getting him stuck in a tree. Meanwhile, all the students are supposed to be standing still, paying attention to the class, but Ron decides to start running around and then finishes the course exercise for Harry by crossing the finish line on foot in the wrong direction. And Hagrid sees all this and is like... <laughs> Hard luck, Harry. Try again. It's just the disappointed look on his face and the sad music playing in the background after all that absurdity happens that just kills me. Whoa. Okay, here we go again then. 
It's weird that I would still get to try again like this, but I guess it makes sense. The game doesn't need to check to see if I'm still Harry, or rather Harry and Buckbeak, since I think that's technically its own character slash 3D model, but I could be wrong, because under normal circumstances I would never be controlling anyone else. So the game simply returns to whoever I was last controlling, regardless of whether that's even the right person in the first place or not. And it looks like Harry and Buckbeak have reset themselves somewhere else. Or perhaps they're in their starting position at the beginning of the course, I don't know. This is just so cool. I can go anywhere I want and look at anything I want from any angle I please. Oh yeah, 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 uh, but that's the fifth command that you should be aware of, the SCTP command. I have no idea what the fuck that stands for, but there it is. The letters for these commands don't appear to be case sensitive here, just make sure that you leave a space between SCTP and the name. And don't include any of those quotation marks, of course, it's just for the explanation. Okay, not only are Harry and Buckbeak not here, but Hagrid is missing too, and I forgot for a second that I would just go through the grass like that. But yeah, Hagrid just left a bunch of third-year students on the edge of the Forbidden Forest. Oh, okay, he wasn't too far away. I thought I went through the grass again because Hagrid is so tall in comparison. Did Buckbeak just appear out of nowhere? Well, there's Harry and some other kid. No, that's the... It's Harry too. what the fuck? Why do we need two models of Harry loaded at once, and why is one of them perpetually in the middle of casting a spell? Fucking weird-ass game. And I thought the game had a separate 3D model of Harry on Buckbeak's back, but I'm not so sure anymore. Of course I wouldn't be able to climb on just by jumping. Alright, Buckbeak. Now oh, I think I mistyped the SCTP command. That's weird how some of these walls are one-way transparent. Well, sometimes, anyways. Alright, I have to ghost myself again. I think I have to do that individually for each character I take control of, since they're all in a walking mode by default. Well, this isn't as majestic as I would have hoped for. We're not seeing Buckbeak's head and back, we're just seeing his ass. Alright, yeah, I think I'm gonna just set him down and release control of him. See, that's the view I was kind of expecting, but here you go. Have a nice drink of water. Okay, what can I do with Hermione in this situation? Hmm. Let's ship Hermione and Draco. Okay, kiss. Fuck, I can't get it. A side view without turning Hermione away from him. Okay, I think I got her in position. Now, help me out here, Neville. Oh, not close enough. Just... Looks like they're in each other's face in the middle of a tense argument. Okay, back to Hermione. A little closer then. Yeah, let's try that. Back to Neville. Yep, got it. And she did that thing with her hand again. Look at this, a perfect photo. Okay, now what? Um, maybe I can do something else back here. Just gotta remember to ghost through the door. Why is the screen flashing on the side of the door? That's fucking annoying. And I'm not walking past something that's obstructing my vision, right? What can I do with Hagrid? That fucking flashing again! Jeez. I mean, you could just... Uh, who cares? I keep forgetting that I have to ghost each new character individually. It's weird, he just tilts sideways when you turn. At least now I'm past the store, I won't get the flashing anymore. Whoa, did I lodge the in-game camera and Hagrid's belly button for a split second? Also, Hagrid doesn't have a walking animation for some reason. This makes no sense, because you'll see him walking during the cutscene where he leads Malfoy away after Buckbeak injures him. I can understand not programming a jumping animation for Hagrid, but they clearly spent a little bit of time working on a walking animation for him, so... How come I'm not seeing it here? 
Of course, you can hardly see very much of Hagrid when in walking mode, but the point is, Harry breaks into a run when he's in ghost mode, so Hagrid should have done that too. And I guess I can't drown in two-dimensional water. I'm gonna walk on water like Jesus did back in the day instead of freezing it into ice using the spell I was just taught. This just looks cool. It's like I'm running on top of curved glass with the water flowing underneath. And I didn't start automatically sliding, though you can tell there's less friction on this section of the slide regardless. <coughs> Damn. Ugh, it's very weird. Oh, now it decides to start. What was so special about that particular spot? There must be some invisible wall of collision detection that extends over this wooden railing to prevent you from sailing over it when you exit the slide. Well, that's a shame. I can't get any shields in ghost mode. This is one of those areas where... There's just such a large volume of unseen space because it's hidden in darkness. I don't expect to find anything out here, but I might get some neat views. Ambient purple light? Okay. Again, it looks cool, but... Uh, fuck, I hate it when I walk somewhere and I can't even see myself. Well, that's pretty cool. I'm not sure what the purple light is for, though. It may simply be the case that I never noticed, but... I'm not sure if it's visible during normal gameplay. But looking down on these slides, it's pretty cool. Okay, typing the walk command from here didn't start dropping me in any distance down to the slide below. I might need to go further down and make myself reappear while I'm at it. What? Why? Back for another go with my Glacius challenge, then. That's right, Professor Flitwick. Just making sure I found everything. Excellent. Oh yeah, we Good were definitely you. looking, but I was interrupted anyways. I doubt Flitwick has ever loaded into this map and hidden away anywhere. The game should be able to give me the dialogue regardless. Can you imagine, though, playing this level as the professor who's supposed to be teaching it instead? Okay, I didn't gain control of the salamander. You know what? There's multiple salamanders in this map, so the game doesn't know which one I want to take control of and therefore doesn't do anything. That's my guess, at least. Okay, what should I do now? Is that another slide? What's that for? I only slide downwards, so I should never have access to this area under normal circumstances. Yeah, this one doesn't send me automatically sliding either. I would love to know what the hell caused Harry to jump in place like that, but... Yeah, why program that slide with reduced friction if I'm never supposed to be there anyways? And we have an entire platform here. And... Yeah, it's just here. I guess I'll run around a bit more, but listen to the subtle, chilly-sounding wind that's blowing icy mist through here that the music and sliding sound effects would normally drown out. <sighs> okay then, glad there's no fall damage. In fact, there only ever seems to be fall damage in this game when you fall into a bottomless pit without actually slamming into the ground. I guess I'll check up there next. I'm getting a little tired of exploring this area. Unfortunately, a lot of it is empty space. God damn it, what the fuck? Now, Harry, see if you can use the glacius. No! Ugh. Alright. What am I gonna do now? I guess I could write a song about Harry's adventure fucking around in debug mode, but I doubt I can sing worth a shit. I don't know what I could use as an instrumental background, maybe a bass or something, but I don't have an instrument with me. Walking on water, walking on air, the boy who lived just doesn't care cause he's Harry. Fucking Potter. 
He's Harry fucking Potter and he just don't give a damn. Eh, that last part didn't rhyme. Maybe that's not so important for a chorus, though, I don't know. I don't know much about music, honestly. If I did, I might be able to have better rhythm, tone, I don't know. I'm practically running vertically downwards now and still haven't reached the end yet, but... This has to be a tall map in order to slide quickly over any meaningful distance. More salamanders again. Nice. Can they even get me from up here? With the that second one doesn't even Light seem to notice me. With the well, that's nice. The game is programmed to have me run forwards after freezing everything, but I was still in ghost mode and ran through the floor. Then I fell downwards for some reason. Eh, that's enough of this Glacius challenge for now. Alright, I'm in the castle, and Dumbledore appears once for a cutscene, so... Oh ho, it worked! I'm in a hidden room where everything is stored until it's needed. Even Dumbledore can't pick up the cards. Oh well, I guess the game only needed Harry, Ron, and Hermione to be able to do that. What the fuck is this? Oh, you know what? It must be the version of McGonagall that's needed for the cutscene where she demonstrates how she can transform into a cat. Time to get out of here, though. Fuck, I hate disappearing like that. Where am I going? Okay, well, there's the rest of the castle, and the frame rate seems to be dropping a bit. I guess nothing can technically exist, or at least visually appear to exist, in these black, undefined spaces between the rooms of a map. Yep, I'm back. And I'm gone again. There you guys are. Yeah, I don't know what I'm supposed to do now that I've got Dumbledore here. Fred and George sell the most excellent chocolate frogs. I'm on my way up the there most now. excellent chocolate frogs? They're the same as any fresh. other, aren't they? Unless they manufacture them themselves, which I kind of doubt they're able to do in their fifth year. Did I comment on that line already in a previous episode? I don't remember, but it seems vaguely familiar. Sorry if I did. Now you can hit F2 to bring up a menu. I might try a different camera view. Whoa, not what I was expecting. I mean, sure, I got a top-down view, just like I asked, but I didn't expect the game to change everything into a wireframe mode. Let me try something else here. Side view? Well, what's the point of this? How does this help anyone? I'm having trouble moving around, too. I can sort of tell which direction I'm facing. What the fuck? How did Harry and the gang end up with me on the moving staircase? Alright, well, there I go again. Shit, Dumbledore fell off. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know what to make of this. If I click wireframe... Well, I get yet another view. Yeah, this so-called front view is the most confusing viewpoint of all, in my opinion. What the hell is depth complexity? Well, now I really can't imagine how this helps anyone debug a game. I'm gonna restart this. Okay, let's go up to the shop as Fred himself. Oh shit, they're charging at me. Get away, you fuckwads! Ugh. Shit, now they're trying to outrun me. Get back here. Good thing I'm in the body that's programmed to run faster than you three. Alright, I'm ahead again. Yeah, they're still coming. Fred and George sell the most excellent chocolate frogs. I am Fred now. and or George. Let's get my energy up for a Quidditch match. Professor McGonagall. Oh, of course, the cutscene. I am glad to see you're feeling better, Harry. Thanks, Professor. Let's skip this shit. Hey, no! Wrong way! Oh shit, wait, stop. Okay, alright. Sorry, Harry. Can't stick around to chat. I've got a whole They're not running up to the shop on their own anymore. The cutscene interrupted that bit of sentience that the game was displaying for a moment there. 
Not only can I not get through, but it looks like Fred has no jumping animation programmed either. This makes sense if he was never intended to be seen jumping, but yet he still technically has the ability, so it just looks like he's launching himself upwards like a stiff board without bending his knees. And retyping SETB Fred doesn't get them running towards the shop again either. I suppose I could jump down and take control of Harry so I can beat Fred to the shop. Okay, why did they go down the stairs and why didn't the camera follow me? Uh, who cares, let's just do this already. Fred's still waiting for us, isn't he? Not anymore, he's not. He's just sitting down there. Unless he started the sprint back up to the stairs on his own. No, he hasn't. See him down there on the first floor? We can beat him to the shop now. I had tuna mate. Um, see you two later. Just remembered, I've got to see Professor McGonagall about something. Oh, we just teleported into place up there. About. See his feet? Welcome to our shop. Try wow. closing your mouth Difficult when you finish stuff. speaking. Just walk up to any item that takes your fancy. We'll tell you what's what and how much it costs. Well, I'm not here to buy anything, just mess around. What better way than to summon Peeves? Hey, wait a minute! Fucking Peeves. Even when I'm inviting him to break the rules of the game, he still finds a way to be annoying. Stupid piece of shit. Alright, here we are. I'm not sure what I'm doing now that I've brought him up here, though. I'm on my way to Fred and George's shop. You're already in the shop, and they don't see Peeves anywhere. Where the fuck did he go? No time to chat. Well, what the fuck? He's still here. Why can't Harry see him? God damn it, quit falling through the ground. It's annoying, and it just wastes time. Fucking asshole. At least I can fly vertically. Now fucking stay still. Yeah, just stay there. You piece of shit! You practically charged at me too. Remember, Harry, after this, I don't care, Ron! For care of magical creatures class. Christ. There's gotta be a way to make this fucker stay put. Whoa. Uh, okay Sorry. then. Maybe I finally got out. it. I'm heading for Fred and George's shop. Do they really need to program certain lines of dialogue so that you don't hear them in certain places. It doesn't make sense for her to say she's headed somewhere when she's already there. Rick the Zebra! Rick the Zebra! Even though this is significantly easier than actually battling Peeves the proper way, this still feels pretty satisfying. Shit, no. I, I meant to type in P's for that SCTP command, not Harry. I guess I had to remember to use commands such as walk and fly to enable collision detection for Peeves and see maybe a character that has it turned off by default. So now I'm in fly mode instead of ghost mode, so hopefully he'll stay still in this room but fall and crash into the floor anyways. That's not falling. As Buzz Lightyear would say, that's falling with style. What the fuck is he Sorry, doing? Harry. You don't have enough cauldron cakes to buy that. Fuck off, don't block my view. I guess now would be a good time to put my aiming skills to the test. He's moving pretty fast, though. Yeah, he's still moving in a pattern, but it's a much faster orbit, so we'll see. Oh no, now he fucked up. Oh, wow, this is fucking hard. At this rate, I probably won't be able to hit him. Alright, you two, have fun with this shithead flying around in here. So this is where Hermione went. Well, she said she needed to see Professor McGonagall about the time turner, and the professor is here too, so I guess that checks out. Uh, 
shit, forgot the space between SCTP and the name. You gotta make sure you type that shit accurately or it will never work. I guess I really don't have a plan right now. I'm just doing random shit and seeing what happens. At least this time I know not to mess with the debug menu settings. Okay, that works. We'll see what I can do in the Transfiguration classroom. That just looks so weird, being able to jump without bending your knees or having any other kind of program jumping animation. That's the door to the Draconicals Lapapur Spell Challenge. I guess it's not open yet. Harry's like a quarter mile away and only a third year, but he's already mastered the magic of remotely talking to you like Professor Oak in the Pokemon games. So there's a dead end here, which makes sense. Why build something elaborate if you're never supposed to see it, but... It doesn't seem to automatically trigger the Draconophores Lapaphores challenge. <laughs> Is that the best you can do? Even though I set Peeves loose in Fred and George's shop, he came out into the corridor to bother me again anyways. But this time I'm bringing Hermione to help with the fighting. Sure, I've left her area and Ron standing around undefended, but... Peeves is such weak shit that it's the equivalent of sitting on the toilet and only being able to fart for a minute before your bowels feel empty again. Alright, here we go. Come on, guys. Shit, what the fuck are you doing? Don't Break just stand the there, shit lords. The wow, there really is a total disconnect here. The game honestly doesn't know that the three protagonists are together right now. At least Hermione can't take damage. Not that that does us any good in the battle against Peeves, though. And likewise, Hermione doesn't join in when these two are casting Rick to Semper at the same time. We got the passwords! Come on, let's give it a go! They only work on the portrait with the floor numbers at the top, right? I think so. Unfortunately, the game never lets you use SCTP during a cutscene. And there's Hermione again, just appearing out of fucking nowhere. And Hagrid's teaching this year. Yeah, he was pretty disappointed when you fucked around during the last hippogriff riding course, though. Fucking behave yourselves this time. So am I. That's great, Neville. We'll go together. Come on, follow me. Suck these nuts. Oh, I want to go up there on top of the castle. It's a great idea, isn't it? The class is down at the paddock. This way. No, nah, I've got other ideas. You can run off to class by yourself since Ron and Hermione try to follow me around anyways. Even when I'm flying. Now I want to see, once and for all, if the top of the pendulum is actually properly connected to the ceiling, or if it's just some illusion. Yeah, that's pretty obviously connected. There were times when I looked at it and wondered if a mistake was made and they left a bit of empty space between the top of the pole and the stone roof. It's interesting, there's a second castle graphic off in the distance behind this primary one. Cool, there's even a hidden platform to run around on. Oh. Not quite sure what the point of this is, though. I think that's the side area where you meet up with Professors Dumbledore and McGonagall at the end of the game. of Neville to wait for us. I suppose we ought to get onto class soon. What do you want to go to class for when you can explore like this? I can teach you all kinds of things about debug mode as I discover them. Although some of it may not count as teaching because they're technically hypotheses about how and why the game might be doing what it's doing. <laughs> Did I really lose you two again? How does that keep happening? You can't follow me up there, and I left you in front of the main castle door, so where else could you possibly go? I'm 
sure there's nothing in Hagrid's hut since you can never go inside anyways, but... Yeah, that's what I thought. It sure is weird how some walls and surfaces have one-way transparency, but then I guess it's pretty easy to do that with your fourth alpha channel with one side of a polygon when the game runs in 32-bit color mode. Hey, Harry! Hello to you too. I'm busy flying without a broomstick, so I'll catch you later. I think I passed Neville, but let's see where these students keep running to. Okay, they just disappear. I don't know what else the game is supposed to do, though. Okay, real quick here before I finish this video. There are three more commands I want to show you regarding beans, pumpkin pasties, and cauldron cakes. Just type any one of these three commands and replace the two quotation marks with a number, and you should be able to effortlessly make yourselves rich beyond your wildest dreams. However, there is a limit to how many items you can give yourself, and this is a limitation due to the fact that this game stores these values as signed 32-bit integers. The number you see below the cauldron cake icon is the absolute most you can give yourself. If you add just one more item to that like I did with the beans, it flips to being a negative number. Adding even more to the beans will reduce that negative number until you hit zero again, and that cycle repeats forever. I'm not going to explain signed integers and all that. There's other videos you could look up if you wanted to get a detailed explanation of why you get these particular numbers, but why bother with all that anyways? You could probably just give yourself 10,000 of each and have more than enough to get through the game anyways. Okay, well that's about it, I suppose. I covered all the commands that I know of that this patch lets you use, except for one, and it's a hell of a command. So much so that it honestly warrants its own episode. And also, this one is half an hour long at this point, so yeah, that's it.